His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirms that Bahrain's long-established banking and financial sector is an important facilitator of direct investment. The Ministry of Interior asserts that the Ministry continues to prepare its caters according to the latest international standards, noting the importance in investing in the human element to meet all security challenges. U.S. Secretary of Defense welcomes Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to the Pentagon. And preparations are underway to evacuate Syrian rebels and their families from Ishran Gota in a deal that will see the town handed over to the government following years of bombardment. Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadr Aqil. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa delegated Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, to confirm the Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa Order of the First Class on Sheikha Tajba, the daughter of Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in a special ceremony held at the Rauda Palace. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika delivered a speech in which she welcomed the attendees to the ceremony honoring Sheikha Tajba bin Salman, who was one of the pioneers of social work and charity in the kingdom. Her Royal Highness expressed pride and pleasure in honoring Sheikha Tajba in tribute to her dedicated efforts to serve the Bahraini community. She hailed her humanitarian qualities, which emanate from her noble principles and altruism. She expressed pride in Sheikh Atajba's contributions, which represent a source of inspiration and encouragement for future generations, wishing her abundant health and happiness. For her part, Sheikh Atajba expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika, describing the honoring as an incentive to exert more efforts. She recalled the philanthropic March of the Royal Family, wishing Bahraini women success and making further achievements for the kingdom. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Samir Abdullah Nas on his election as Chairman of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, wishing him success to continue the Chamber's effective role in spurring the Kingdom's economic activities and growth. His Majesty the King also congratulated the winning board members, wishing them success and praising the BCCI's successful, transparent, free and fair elections, as well as the vast electoral participation. His Majesty the King praised the Chamber's key achievements since its foundation more than 75 years ago, citing the BCCI's pioneering role in serving the mercantile progress in Bahrain and boosting its economic status on the regional and international map. His Majesty the King affirmed that the Chamber is deemed a vital and effective partner in the comprehensive revitalization process, thanks to the private sector's continual efforts in supporting the construction and development process that serve the national march and boost the national economy's competitive capability at the international level. His Majesty the King took pride in the role of Bahraini traders and business people who took upon their shoulders to serve this vital sector and develop its performance following the steps of their predecessors who founded the ancient trade movement and contributed to building Bahrain's renaissance throughout history. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable congratulations to Samir Abdullah Nas on his election as Chairman of Bahrain C Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI wishing him success to continue the Chamber's effective role in spurring the Kingdom's economic activities and growth. His Royal Highness noted the role of the commercial sector in the comprehensive development march of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in which it works to provide an environment which ensures the continuation of progress. The Crown Prince congratulated the winning board members, wishing them success to achieve more gains for the commercial sector. His Royal Highness praised the BCCI successful, transparent, free and fair elections, as well as the vast electoral participation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stated that Bahrain's 2030 economic vision goals and principles, which are sustainability, competitiveness and equity, are a framework to develop partnership between the private and public sector and affirm continuous constructive communication with the BCCI. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa 
Today held a meeting with the chairman of InvestCorp's board of directors, Dr. Yusuf Al Ibrahim at Rudaybiya Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness and the chairman discussed the latest developments in Bahrain's financial services sector. His Royal Highness and the chairman also discussed the central role effective regulation plays in the financial industry, adding that Bahrain's long established banking and financial sector is an important facilitator of direct investment. His Royal Highness noted that Bahrain has been clear from the outset that economic development of efforts are centered upon citizens and realizing their aspirations. His Royal Highness concluded by encouraging InvestCorp to continue promoting their innovative investment products and expanding their investor base in Bahrain and the region. The Chairman extended his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The meeting was also attended by InvestCorp's Board of Directors and Senior Executives. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, patronized the 11th ceremony of the Productive Family Award organized by the Ministry of Labor and Social Development. Her Royal Highness affirmed that the Kingdom possesses a wealth of experience in supporting and encouraging productive families through plans and programs that shift from production to marketing inside and outside the Kingdom, hailing the family's efforts to highlight behind the products, support the local economy, and promote high-quality products. She highlighted the importance of recognizing the positive results achieved for productive families during the project's development, including diversifying their options and developing their productive abilities through continuous training. Her Royal Highness congratulated the winners, expressing satisfaction with the increasing demand to compete for the award, which is aimed to honor Bahraini craftsmanship through establishing the values of manual labor in its broad fields. Princess Abika toured the Productive Families Distinguished Products Exhibition and viewed the family's projects closely and the, develop they, rather the development they achieved that reflects the facilitation the Kingdom provides for them. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ahmedan, delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to Her Royal Highness for her keenness on patronizing the ceremony and honoring the winners, which reflects her initiatives to serve the country and its citizens and represents her support and encouragement to productive families.
The Kingdom of Bahrain has paid tremendous importance to the projects of productive families. The Kingdom has supported these projects as they represent small and medium businesses that contribute to the expansion of the labor market, increase social welfare and empower families and women. This year's event, I think, is adds the value to the people and members' families to be productive, be able to produce something that adds value to the whole country. Families and people have those kind of businesses that they work from home, and those are really good supportive. My product itself, I actually make what we call it Arabic coffee, and the name is Gahwa 360. And then because of what I do is Arabic coffee that is instant and for the size. We made it because this is today is that kind of people want. People want something to be ready immediately, on a spot, and to just do without caring about it with the time, everything. The award aims to provide material and moral support for the families, ensure their sustainability and development, and support their ability to compete in local, Arab, and international markets. Our Bahraini product that we make is exactly the same as what international. It should be able, we could be able to export it outside and feel proud of it. The objective of the Productive Families Award is to increase the income of the family. Around 200 projects were registered in the competition in three categories, Best Productive Family, Best Product and Best Sponsor. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, it's an honor to receive this award. We have different kind of products like uh, card holders, uh, women's bag, like uh, small mini mirrors and large mirrors, some other stuff like this artworks there. The event combines both creativity and innovation and benefits from synergized efforts, expertise and diversified funding sources in order to expand the base of beneficiaries according to an ambitious plan to promote these families. This award aims to provide full support for productive families in which it reflects Bahrain's keenness to empower families, enhance their economic conditions and their standard of living. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a letter of thanks from the Charged Affairs of the Iraqi Embassy. Khalil Abdul Rada al-Shamari, in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to Bahrain and its people for its efforts in lifting the ban on Iraqi stadiums and Bahrain's support to Iraq in various fields, especially the sports field, which reflects the close ties between the two countries. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the decision of the International Federation of Association Football to lift the ban on holding official international matches in Iraq provides an opportunity to continue developing football in the country. His Highness noted that this decision reflects the pursuit of sports players in Iraq, the arrival of clubs and teams to play on their land and among their fans. His Highness Sheikh Nasser congratulated Iraq on this decision, which has come as a result of the work of sports officials and their constant communication with officials in the Federation. His Highness praised the Iraqi official and civil efforts aimed at lifting the ban and noted the importance of the Asian Football Confederation, the AFC, presided by Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, for support of the return of football matches to Iraq and lifting the ban. He also noted the support of various countries to Iraq. The events of the Arabian Gulf Award for Young Novelists commences tomorrow, which is held under the patronage of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and organized by Al Watan newspaper in partnership with His Highness Sheikh Khalid's media office. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed pleasure in the wide participation in the award, which affirms the determination of the youth to write a novel in 24 hours, highlighting the abilities they possess to achieve the goal of the award of developing the field of literature. He expressed confidence in the capabilities and contributions of the youth in many fields, especially culture, which reflects their knowledge in various types, noting that launching the award stems from his keenness on the importance of enhancing the role of culture in communities and supporting the youth to express their creativity. He stated that the award will represent a platform for the youth to show their talent in writing novels, wishing all the participants success and expressing appreciation for the efforts of the organizing committee to make the event successful. 
The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Police Academy, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended today the graduation ceremony of the 12th batch of military students of the Diploma in Criminal and Police Sciences. On this occasion, the Interior Minister asserted that the ministry continues to prepare its caters according to the latest international standards of scientific and training curricula. He also noted the importance in investing in the human element as a major access in the process of modernization to meet all the security challenges and deal with various developments with high readiness, discipline and efficiency. The Interior Minister meanwhile praised the pioneering role of the Royal Academy of Police in the areas of training and curriculum development that keep pace with educational programs to meet security changes and increasing challenges. The director of the Royal Police Academy asserted or rather addressed the gathering, welcoming the Minister of Interior and lauding his patronage of the graduation ceremony. He also underscored the Academy's keenness following the directives of the Minister of Interior on raising the efficiency and achieving the objectives through the training and educational policy for all the affiliates of the Ministry of Interior in addition to the follow-up of the Public Security Chief to all the programs in order to ensure the quality of the learning output that can compete with internationally reputed colleges. After that, the graduates took the oath. The Minister of Interior then congratulated the graduates and honored the top achievers, urging them to exert more efforts in serving the nation. The ceremony was attended by senior officers and a number of officials and graduates' families. أقسم بالله العظيم. أقسم بالله العظيم. أقسم بالله العظيم. أن أكون وفيا للبحرين. أمينا على حقوقها. مخلصا لمليكها المفدى. مطيعا لجميع الأوامر الحقة. التي تصدر إلي من رؤسائي محافظا على شرفي وسلاحي مؤديا أعمال وظيفتي بالصدق والأمانة محترما قوانين البلاد وحقوق الناس والله على ما أقول شهيد On the occasion of the World Water Day, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain, represented, rather represented by its wise leadership and government, pays great attention to the topic of energy and water conservation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tahtafil memlekatu al-Bahrain ma'a ashiqaiha min duwal majlis al-ta'awun li duwal al-khalij al-arabiyya bil yawm al-alami lil-miyah. والذي يصادف يوم 22 مارس تحت شعار الطبيعة لأجل المياه ويتزامن هذا اليوم مع أسبوع الترشيد الخليجي خلال الفترة 22 إلى 29 مارس حيث تدشن هيئة الكهرباء والماء عدة فعاليات بهذه المناسبة لعل أهمها إقامة احتفالية كبرى
تنظمها الهيئة بالتعاون مع وزارة التربية والتعليم وكانت الهيئة قد قامت بفعالية مشتركة مع جامعة البحرين احتفاء باليوم العربي للمياه وذلك بتاريخ 3 مارس وقد أولت قيادة مملكة البحرين وحكومتها الرشيدة موضوع ترشيد الطاقة والمياه اهتماما خاصا تمثل في إنشاء إدارة خاصة بترشيد الكهرباء والماء تابعة للهيئة تهدف من خلالها إلى تعزيز هذا التوجه الهادف إلى تحسين كفاءة الطاقة وترشيد استهلاك المياه والمحافظة على الموارد الحيوية في المملكة وتمثل الاستدامة إحدى المبادئ الرئيسية الثلاثة لرؤية 2030 لمملكة البحرين في ظل العهد الزاهر لحضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه ودشنت مملكة البحرين العديد من المشاريع والبرامج الهادفة إلى ترشيد استهلاك المياه وخفض التسربات المائية حيث تقوم الهيئة بتقديم الدعم الفني للكشف عن التسربات المائية في مرافق المشتركين ومتابعة إصلاحها وبينما استمرت الهيئة في تعزيز برنامج التمديدات المائية وتنظيم العمل في هذا المجال وتنسجم هذه المبادرات والمشاريع مع رؤية مملكة البحرين 2030 كما تتماشى أيضا مع أهداف الأمم المتحدة فيما يتعلق بالتنمية المستدامة ومن بينها الهدف السادس والذي ينص على ضمان توافر المياه وخدمات الصرف الصحي للجميع ولتعزيز هذه الجهود وتأطيرها تتعاون مملكة البحرين مع دول مجلس التعاون الخليجي وجامعة الدول العربية من خلال المشاركة في اجتماعات اللجان المتخصصة والفعاليات والبرامج المعنية بتعزيز الموارد الحيوية واستدامتها ولا يفوتني بهذه المناسبة أن أتقدم بجزيل شكري وتقديري إلى جميع المسؤولين والعاملين في قطاع المياه على جهودهم المتواصلة من أجل خدمة هذا الوطن العزيز في مجالات المياه وترشيد الاستهلاك ومتمنيا لهم المزيد من العطاء ختاما تتطلع مملكة البحرين إلى مزيد من التنسيق والتكامل في هذا الجانب متمنين أن يكون الاحتفال بهاتين المناسبتين منعطفا إيجابيا في مسيرة الدول العربية نحو تعزيز التعاون والتنسيق فيما بينها لبناء منظومة موحدة لإدارة قطاع المياه وتحسين كفاءته في عالمنا العربي. Labor and Social Development Minister Jamil Mohammed Ali Hamedan opened today the sixth edition of Education and Training International Exhibition at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Education is the passport to the future, and tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it. Education and Training Exhibition 2018 is strategically timed to maximize the enrollment of students and reach out to the new batch of aspiring leaders of tomorrow, providing an indispensable platform for 48 exhibitors comprehensively showcasing higher education, digital education, vocational and occupational training and human resource development courses to not only students and visitors from Bahrain but also the GCC many exhibitors from Bahrain and even from outside Bahrain like universities, academics, training center 
this is very good uh, opportunity for also the students, the foreigner or Bahraini students in Bahrain. They are coming here, they are making networking with the representatives to explore uh, new programs, opportunities for study further in Bahrain and abroad. We are here from Ajman Chamber of Commerce and we are bringing with us three uh, big universities in Ajman. We are looking to promote these universities here in uh, Bahrain. We are looking to attract uh, students to come and register in these uh, universities. The exhibition provides opportunities for those who wish to receive specialized training, develop their skills on academic and professional levels to enable them to advance in their careers. It also helps students to enhance their knowledge of various job opportunities in the labor market and identify their future career paths. Very important exhibition uh, because it would give uh, potential students the opportunities uh, to see, to look at uh, potential courses and programs uh, which are really appropriate for the market uh, place. Coming to this exhibition is fantastic. We have uh, talked to too many students from Bahrain and we have introduced our college to them, our field and the importance of our field and how it is like international field where they can work in Bahrain and all around the world. The minister stressed on the importance of continuing to develop and improve the outputs of the training and educational institutions in Bahrain to prepare qualified national calibers matching the international standards, current and future needs of the labor market and strengthen the position of Bahrain as a regional training center. Edutex is a strategically important event, providing a great platform showcasing higher and digital education, vocational and occupational training to over 5,000 students and visitors. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul -Ofur. The President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the Islamic Art Facing Extremism Conference held in Egypt. She affirmed that culture is the first act of resistance in the face of extremism and terrorism, adding that Manama represents a model for coexistence which will contribute to including the city in UNESCO's World Heritage List. She noted that the cultural authority promotes the Islamic Enlightenment values in remarkable events as part of the Muharraq year as a capital for Islamic culture. For his part, the manager of the Library of Alexandria, Dr. Mustafa al faqif welcomed Sheikh Hameh hailing the efforts aimed at preserving Bahraini and Arab cultural heritage and enhancing the status of culture regionally and internationally. The Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United States of America, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, affirmed that the continued economic growth and success of the kingdom to attract foreign investments was a result of the natural and open economic environment under the reform policies of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa as well as the wise economic policies in line with Bahrain's Vision 2030. He said the successful visits of the Crown Prince to the U.S. last November further bolstered the outstanding relations between the two countries. This came during a discussion forum held by the American Chamber of Commerce, the ACC, to discuss the outstanding economic ties between Bahrain and the U.S., as well as to promote the investment forum Gulf Gateway to be held in Bahrain from the 8th to the 10th of May. The discussion forum was attended by the Chief Executive Officer of the Urban Planning and Development Authority, Sheikh Naif bin Khalid Al Khalifa, a number of officials from the U.S. Department of State and Commerce, as well as over 20 American companies. The Ambassador of Bahrain to the U.S. reviewed the latest developments regarding major projects being implemented in the Kingdom. He also highlighted the steady growth witness in the trade exchange between the two countries since the ratification of the Free Trade Agreement more than a decade ago. The Rather, the ambassador announced that the Gulf Gateway Investment Forum would focus on investment in oil and gas, real estate development, tourism, housing, electricity, and water manufacturing, as well as housing. He said that the forum would include two tracks, one on high-level talks that will include the participation of governments, sovereign wealth funds, and in multinational companies, and will focus on identifying investment opportunities in the Gulf market, while the other will be held on specific investment opportunities and investment-ready projects. In a related context, the ambassador announced the hosting of the ACC to the, Prime Min to the Minister of Finance, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, an executive officer of the Economic Development Board, Khalid Amr al Rumehi, in April to market the investment forum. He stressed that the distinguished Bahraini-American relations in the economic and security fields 
are not only interrelated but are an important element in the security and stability of the region. Sheikh Nayef said that the Urban Development and Planning Authority is currently implementing the Kingdom's development and urban planning policies in line with the three basic principles of the Vision 2030, which are sustainability, competitiveness, and justice. The U.S. Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis welcomed Saudi Crown Prince, Minister of Defense, and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Mohammed bin Salman to the Pentagon. Prince Mohammed bin Salman's meeting with Mattis yesterday comes a day after the Saudi prince met with a number of American company CEOs where several businesses deals are expected to be inked. Among the defense companies he has met so far include Boeing, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and General Dynamics. The meeting touched on the cooperation at all levels, including the development of trade cooperation and technology development between Saudi Arabia and the United States, as well as reviewing a number of investments in various fields. Prince Mohammed bin Salman has been on an official visit to Washington since Monday, where he was welcomed to the Oval Office meeting with President Donald Trump. Syrian rebels and their families were expected to leave a besieged town in the eastern Ghouta suburbs of Damascus today in an evacuation deal that will see the town handed over to the government following years of bombardment. Buses from the Syrian Ministry of Transport and Syrian Red Crescent vehicles were seen on the outskirts of Harasta today after crossing the latest Syrian army checkpoint before the town. Spokesman for the rebel faction Ahrar al-Sham, Mundar Faris, said yesterday that his group's fightings were preparing to leave Harasta and, leave to, and head to the northern province of Idlib as part of a negotiated deal. It is the first such deal involving the evacuation of opposition fighters from the area, which has been under ferocious government air and ground assault for a month. The government-controlled military media center says 1,500 rebels and 6,000 civilians will leave. Meanwhile, Syria and rebels released today 13 prisoners to the government ahead of the planned evacuation. The men identified themselves to the media as soldiers and civilians attached to the Syrian army captured by rebels in the fighting for Harasta. Palestinian teenager Ahad Tamimi on Wednesday was sentenced to eight months in prison for slapping and kicking a pair of Israeli soldiers outside her West Bank home, capping a case that turned the 17-year-old girl into a Palestinian protest icon and attracted international attention. Tamimi's Israeli lawyer said she agreed to the sentence as part of a plea deal with prosecutors that allowed her to avoid more serious charges that could have imprisoned her for years. The lawyer called the legal proceedings a farce. The judge agreed to a similar plea deal for Tamimi's mother, Nariman, who has been charged with incitement. Tamimi's father said they agreed to the deal because they had been threatened with three years in jail. Tamimi was arrested in December after video surfaced of her kicking the soldiers outside her West Bank home. After we understood that the military prosecution wanted to keep Ayd in detention for several years uh, because this case is a case of deterral, that they're trying to deter other Palestinian youth from resisting occupation as I did, actually it is, uh, it is a decision that, uh, that we can say that we won the military, the military uh, court because the moment they decided to keep Ayat's trial behind closed doors, we knew that this was not going to be a just trial. So after, the, after that, the prosecution understood that they have to erase all the violent charges against Ayat. So we can say that for sure, taking the circumstances that this is a court of occupation, this is the best decision that we could have received here. She is doing well. She had a program reading, studying, and uh, sport, and she um, yani start her uh, bureaucracy on the daily life inside the prison. But she is strong, and her spirit is very high, and she uh, continue encourage the people to continue our fighting for our rights. And before we end the news, here's a reminder of our top stories. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince affirms that Bahrain's long-established banking and financial sector is an important facilitator of direct investment. The Minister of Interior asserts that the Ministry continues to prepare its caters according to the latest international standards, noting the importance in investing in the human element to meet all security challenges. The U.S. Secretary of Defense welcomes Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to the Pentagon. 
and preparations are underway to evacuate Syrian rebels and their families from Eastern Volta in a deal that will see the town handed over to the government following years of bombardment. And that's all from Bahrain International's News Center. From all the news team and me, Sharaqi, goodbye.